Hello. What's up, Rabbi? Good, Baruch Hashem. You see me, huh? I do. I don't not. know what I'm doing. No, I don't. Hang on, hang on. The bottom left should be our video, I think. Okay. This is like recording. I'm doing it with a tab, or I'm trying to. It says we have all kind of picture. Uh, our video, it says video. Yeah. Welcome to host. I don't know what's going on. What's going on, Yaakov? Hi. I, I'm on a tablet, and there's a little box on the bottom. Uh, as Joey, you should know. Okay. You know, let me get Joey. He's here. He's on. Yeah. Is he on yet? I'm not sure. Hi, Rebbe. I'm I'm here. I'm just uh, setting up the uh, Facebook Live right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there should be a button for Rebbe to press the start video. Start video. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Start video. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Rebbe. Is that good? I pressed it. That's perfect. Yeah. Let me show them. Okay, I'm spotlighting Rebbe now, and I'm going to go fix up the thing. Rebbe could start whenever you're ready. The, and the sound is very messed up. You know, let me exit from. It's most probably Rebbe's internet connection because it was like that on the computer earlier as well. So. Are you? Can you hear me well or no? You heard me. Yeah. Yes, we could hear Rebbe, but Rebbe's screen is uh, is frozen. It's frozen. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I can do it on a laptop. And that's right now I'm doing it with tablet. Is the laptop there? No, you know, we, Rebbe, Rebbe's unfrozen now. Let's try this, and if it doesn't work, Rebbe will sign on what? again. We'll try this, and if it doesn't work, Rebbe will sign on again and from, the, from, the, uh, from the laptop. Well, yeah, very easy, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm Amish. Don't hear you guys, but if you if it's good for you, so fine. I can hear Rebbe. You can hear me. Yeah. And is my is my thing frozen or I'm okay? No, now you're good. Okay, great, great. One second, let me move this thing back. Yeah, I'm gonna mute everybody and then unmute Rabbi, unmute Rabbi Falk. Oh. Well, these are you guys. We ready? Abram Yosef. Yes, Rebbe, we are ready. Oh, great. Great, great. Okay. Valdi. Okay, gentlemen. One second. Okay, good to go. Okay. Lemaisa, the last week's Parsha and this week's Parsha speak about Kedoshim. Last week's Parsha, Kedoshim to you. And this week's Parsha, there's a mitzvah of Nigdashti Besech Ben Israel. We have to be holy people. Now, in last week's parsha, it's a crazy, crazy thing. It says kedoshim to you, right? It says first of all, it says that the mitzvah of kedoshim to you was said behakel. Kadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, "Daber el bnei Yisrael, daber by daber Hashem on Moshe Leimor, daber el kol adaz bnei Yisrael, speak to all of Klal Yisrael, v'amart aleim, you should tell them." You have to be holy. Now, there is, first of all, why did this mitzvah have to be said to all of Klai Yisrael? Everybody had to be there together. All the mitzvahs were said for all of Klai Yisrael. But there was something very, very special about this mitzvah. That the Dark Musa brings down from the, the Zohar HaKadosh. 
the Zohar Kodesh says, Kadhavu matu chevraya kadisho. When the holy chabura, our holy chabura, with the holy chabura back there with the Shimon by Yochai, when they used to get to this parsha, lahai parshosa, havu chadoyim. It's unbelievably happy. They have tremendous simcha from this mitzvah of Kedoshim to you. Now, why is this mitzvah of Kedoshim to you? Why is that, would that make Klai so, so much happier than any other mitzvah? So, Rabbi Yisai, I want to tell you what I, Rabbi Yaakov Naiman says this. I think this is such an emiss of shot. The mitzvah of Kedoshim to you, to, to, that we should be holy, is something which is a mitzvah not really for every single person. Lachar, it's a mitzvah for big tzaddikim. Who can be Kedosh? The Zoyer HaKadosh says that when they learned this Parsha, when Kleistro learned this Parsha, they were unbelievably happy because they realized that the mitzvah of Kedosh in Tiyu, it wasn't said to Yechidim, but, but HaKadosh Boku said, I want you to get every single year to stand and to listen and to hear the mitzvah of Kedosh in Tiyu because every single Jew, every year can be Kodesh. It's crazy. Why? How can we be Kodesh? The Slonim Rebbe, the Nesiva Sholem says, he says an unbelievable thing. The Nesiva Sholem says in Parsha's Kedoshim in last week's Parsha, This is the explanation of speak to every single year. Kedoshim to you. This was said to every single Jew. From the most simple people. To the holiest and the highest people. Call Echod. Mitzuvo the Mitzvah's Kedoshim to you. Every single Jew is higher than the Mitzvah of Kedoshim to you. Batam. How? What is the reason? How can we be Kedosh? Ki Kodosh ani Hashem lokechem. God says, because I'm Kodosh. She'ani nimtzo b'toichichem. I'm in every single one of you. Every yid out there. Every one of the chevra v'achabura. Chevra kadisha. Has a piece of a Kodosh Baruch Hu in him. The Kodosh sheichem b'toich kol Yehudi. There's Kedusha. Kodosh Baruch Hu is living and dwelling in every single Jew. U'lekoch tzorich Yehudi lis Kadesh. A Jew has to be Makadish himself, make himself holy. In order to allow a Kurdish Bahu to live inside of us. Wow! Every year is a Kurdish. A boy say, how do we do that? How do we keep how do we make ourselves Kurdish? So the truth is, every brocha that we say, what do we say? Borochato Hashem, Kenu Melech Oilam, every brick is a mitzvah. Asher kiddushonu b'mitzvoysav. You are makadishos. You made us hold your mitzvahs. When we daven, when we say a bracha, we bring kedusha to ourselves. Gevaldik kedusha. But I want to tell you, Mitzvah Maisa, and I believe that this is one of the secrets of us being kedusha, of, of our being able to hold the kedusha to our kedusha to live. The beautiful Maisa, and Rabbi Yehudnaim, and the Sefer Chimus brings down. That brings them that his red Arab Roshkin Zikhoiko was traveling on a train and he met a Chosid, a Modzich Chosid. And the Chosid, they started speaking, and the Chosid says, I want your mice for my red from the Modzich. He tells them that the Rebbe was in this mesh, and a Chosid, the Chosid, a year face, he wasn't, you know, so. Uh, I will ask you to see the rest. But if I can help, come on. He said, Look, I'd like to be serious with you. I'd like to take counsel with you. Get some advice in my business. I have business and I have some business. The Reb said, Look, I received, but I'm a, a business I'm not a counselor for business. I, I, I really can't. Okay, but it gets uh, starts being away. And uh, another he walks to the Reb and he sits down with the Reb and he says, Reb, Reb, I need to ask you to sit with me. I need to sit with me. The Reb is pleased to see you sit down. The guy is nice and shy. Then he, he walks away. He 
sit back in the group and he sees this close city speaking Rebbe and they're speaking about business. Rebbe and him, you know, should be looking what we're doing. And he says, eight everything that sits for an hour. Cussing his business and the big gates. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Rebbe, Rebbe, I'm broken. Rebbe, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to disturb. Something's wrong with Rebbe's audio. We can't hear. I'm not sure if everyone if it's like that for everybody. We had a couple of people already commented that we can't hear Rebbe. Uh, oh, you know, let, let me be good. Rebbe, you need to go out of the bomb shelter. Out of the. You have to go out of the bomb shelter for sure. Oh, Okay. If I hope to zoom on two things, I don't want to be a laptop. Is make it from? Of course, it's that. Nice or subtle. You must be saying something very deep and meaningful to us. Is this good? Let me put. Is this better? Joey, what's doing? Is this okay or no? So it sounds a lot better. The picture. What's it? The picture is frozen. Can you hear me now? Okay, Rebby, turn off the other one, and now it should be fine. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Okay. I'm going. Okay. Can you hear me? Sounds good. Evolve it. Okay, gentlemen. You see me? Yup. Everything's good, Joey. Whoa! Look at this, Howie Pearlstein. Whoa, my gosh. Where? What? Did, what? Did, did you hear everything I said, or you guys missed it? Where should I start? Mr. Margolis, how you doing? What's master? Oh, Last thing we heard, you were yelling. We, but you okay. might want to do Where it again. Where should we start from, gentlemen? Should we start from the beginning or what? Yeah, yeah, from the beginning. From the, from the beginning? Okay, so we'll start the kids from the beginning. There is a Gavaldi de Mitzvah from the last week's parsha of Kedoshim to you. We have to be holy. There's a mitzvah like that in this week's parsha too. The Nigdashti Besech B'nei Yisrael. The mitzvah of Kedoshim to you was said, the Hakel. It was said in front of all of Klai Yisrael. Kodesh Baruch Hu told Meish Rabbeinu, get everybody together. I want everybody to hear this mitzvah. The Zayar HaKodesh brings down that when, when, the, the, when the Talmidim used to come to Parshish Kedoshim, it says, Kadmatu Chavrayo Kadisho Lahai Parshoso. When they would come to the Parsh of Kedoshim Tiyu, and they would read the Parsh of Kedoshim Tiyu, they were unbelievably happy. First of all, the chayra, the mitzvah of Gedash and Tiyu was only by big, big tzaddikim. It's not by people like us. That's what I would think. And why by the mitzvah of Gedash and Tiyu did it have to be said in front of all of Klai Yisrael? And why were Klai Yisrael so happy when they came to the mitzvah of Gedash and Tiyu? So Rabbi Yaakov Naiman wants to say, according to the Zaya, we think that being holy, Kedosh and Tiyu, is a mitzvah which is only shaykh by Bit Tzadikim. It's not shaykh by, by me. It's not shaykh by a Pasha Diyid. The Zayar comes along and says that they were so happy when they heard Kedosh and Tiyu was a mitzvah that Kodesh Baruch said, you make sure every single Yid was there. From the most simple Yid to the most chosh of a Yid, they all have to be there because they are all shaykh to the mitzvah of Kedosh and Tiyu. We read from the Nesiv Shalom. 
a beautiful, beautiful piece. The Nesiba Shalom says, he says, Daber el kol adas b'nei Yisrael kedoshin to you. Tell every single Jew that you have to be kodesh. Shetzivu izeh nemar le kol adas b'nei Yisrael. It says to every single one. Kol echod mitzubu be kedoshin to you. Every single one of us is chayev to be kedoshin, to be holy. And then he says something that blows my mind. He says, why? How can we be kedoshin to you? He says, v'hatam, the Pasuk says, kedoshin to you. He, because Kodesh Ani Hashem Elokechem, because I am holy, says the Slanim Rebbe, Shani Nim Tzavet Noichechem. I'm in every single one of you. Kodesh Baruch Hu comes and lives in every single Jew, and He's in every one of us. And Mimelu, we have to be Kodesh because a Kodesh Baruch Hu is in every single one of us. He dwells in us. Mishachanti B'Soichom. Praise. We have to make sure that he wants to stay and live with us. We have to be Makadesh ourselves that he should want to stay. But a Kaddish Baruch is in every single one of us. Now, how do we want to keep that Kaddusha? So the truth is, like I said, every time we say a bracha, what do we say? A Birka Samitza? Baruch Hato Hashem, Lokeinu Melech Oilam, Asher, Ki Desharnu Bebitz Moisav. You are Makadesh us with every single mitzvah that, that we do. Every mitzvah, every time we do a chesed, Every time we put on drilling, that brings to us the root. But I want to tell you a Meiri de Kamaisa from the Modzi Chereb. This Maisa is brought down in a safer called the Darchi Musser. His name they, it's, it was written by somebody by the name of Rabbi Yaakov Naiman. He was a Yeshiva in Petach Tikhvin Eretz Yisrael, a Yeshiva or Yisrael. Rabbi Yaakov Naiman says that his Rebbe, Harav Rosenstein, was on a train once in Europe and he met a Modzi Chereb. And they became, they were speaking, and the Chosid says, I want to tell you myself from my Rebbe. He tells them that his Rebbe was sitting in the base medrash, and a Jew walks up to him and he says, listen, Rebbe, you're a big tzaddik, I heard tremendous things about you, I'm having some problems with my business, I'd like to seek counsel, be misites with you, if you can help me, I have some shilas, if you can give me some advice with my business. The Rebbe looks at me and says, I'm not a, a business advisor. I face. I, I don't give business advice. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. The Jew starts walking away. And one of the Hasidim then walks up to the Rebbe and tells the Rebbe, Rebbe, I'm having problems with my business. Could you help me? The Rebbe says, sure, sit down, have a seat. This other guy's looking on like he doesn't know what happened, right? He asked him if he can help him with business. And he, he, you know, the Rebbe says he doesn't give advice on business. This Hasid sits down. He starts asking the Rebbe all kinds of fine details about his business. What should he do? And the Rebbe sits with him for an hour and he gives him advice on his business. The guy is, the, guy is the, the other Yid who came, but first, he's blown away. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't understand. This Chassid gets up afterwards. He walks away. And the first Yid who would ask the Rebbe to speak to him and ask him for advice, and he said he doesn't give advice in business, he comes back up to the Rebbe. He says, Rebbe, I'm sorry, but you said you don't give business advice, but you just gave him such wonderful advice. Why don't you give me business advice? Why can't I ask you a question in, in, with regards to my business? The Rebbe says, I want to tell you a marshal amount of advice. Let me tell you a story. He says, there was once a guy, he walked into a store. It was a very um, you know, big store. It was like a big, big department store. They sold all kinds of stuff. And he walks up to the owner of the store and he says, listen, I need oil for the wheels of my wagon. And the guy looks at him and the guy says, listen, we don't sell we, uh, oil for wheels of wagons. That's not our business. It's a big store. It's a very hush of a store, right? We don't do that. But the guy turns around, starts walking away. As he's walking away, another guy walks up to the owner and he says, listen, could you help me out? I need some oil for the wheels of my wagon. The owner goes, sure, no problem. I'll send down one of my men and they'll take care of it for you, right? This other guy who was turned away, he walks back to the owner and he says, I don't understand. He says, I don't get it. I asked you if you would sell me some oil, and you said you don't sell oil. This guy just walked over up to you. Not only you're selling him oil, but you're sending down your work until oil was his wagon. Why aren't you selling me oil? The owner looks at me and says, sir, he says, that man is one of my best clients. He comes to my store all the time. I don't sell oil, but he's a good client. He needs some oil. I'll sell down one of my workers, and we'll give him some oil. He says, you, I don't even know you. You never come here. You come here to buy oil. We don't sell oil. The Rebbe said to the Yid, he said, that chosid, 
He's a chassid. He comes to me to ask me eitzes in his learning, in his avodah Hashem, in his davening, how to raise his children, what his house should look like, what his shabbat should look like. So he comes and he asks me for, for advice on business. I'll give him some advice on business because he, he's, he's connected. But you, you just come in for business advice. I'm not a business advisor. The Rebbe said, a person has to be connected. If you're connected, you get everything. If you're not connected, you just come in. What do you think? If you think it's a soda machine, you drop in a quarter and you, and you get a soda. That's not what it is. We have to be connected. Rabbi said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we work for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're connected all the time. Kedai Shem is to be connected all the time to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They tell a story about two buddies. They went to high school together. They were good friends. And they both, when they graduated high school, they both went to work for a railroad. But after 20 years, one of the guys became the president of the railroad. And he had his own car, because of a guy. You're right, we got to be good customers. Yeah? He, right, he's, one guy became the president of the railroad. And he's in his, his big car. He's got his own car. You know, with, with a, with, you know, he's got his own bathroom. He's got like a, you know, a table and he's got a kitchen there. And he's mamish all, all pimped up. And he's driving with the train, inspecting all the different stations. And he pulls up at one station and he sees the guy who's the manager of that little station. The guy's like cleaning the place up. He looks out the window, the president, and he sees it's his buddy from 20 years ago. So he calls out, he says, Bob, how you doing? You know, this is Frank. Frank comes down, he goes, Bob, man, what's going on? <laughs> what are you doing here? He says, what do you mean? I'm working for the railroad. I, I've been here for 20 years. He looks at Frank, he says, Frank, you're the, you're the president of the railroad? Frank says, yeah, I'm the president of the railroad. He goes, how did you become president of the railroad? And I'm stuck here just managing a little station, sweeping here the, the, the station. And, and you're the president. How did you become the president of the railroad? Why? What's the difference between me and you? We were good buddies back in school. The president says to him, Bob, I want to tell you something. We both joined the railroad 20 years ago. When you came to the railroad, you know what you were working for? You were working for your 15 bucks an hour. And you're still working for your 15 bucks an hour. He says, when I came and joined the railroad, I was working for the railroad. And that's how I became the president. Because I was connected to the railroad and I was looking out for the good of the railroad. I wasn't working just for my 15 bucks. So you, you, you get your 15 bucks, but that's all you get. I became the president of the railroad. Rabbi Sai, we do not work for 15 bucks from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's not, I need this, I need this, give me that. We work for the company. We work for a Kaddish Baruch Hu. We're connected to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's Kedai Shintil. Rabbi Sai, I want to tell you something else. This week's Parsha, it goes to a whole new level. Crazy, crazy Nesiv Shalom. The Pasuk says, V'nikdashdi v'seich b'nei Yisrael. You have to be willing to be Mekadesh Shem Shemayim. The Nesiv Shalom says, he quotes from the Rambam. He says, the Rambam counts in the mitzvahs, Hilchus Yisoyde HaTayro. That's the Allah of the foundations of the Torah. He counts the mitzvah of Emuna in HaKadosh Baruch Abbas HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Yerosa, Yero. And afterwards in the fifth parak, he counts the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. The mitzvah of Nikdashti B'Seich B'nei Yisrael. But it's a, there's a strange lotion. When he talks about the mitzvah of Nikdashti B'Seich B'nei Yisrael, he writes, Kol Beis Yisrael, every single year. Mitzuvim al Kiddush Hashem HaGodol, Achayev, to be Moise Nefesh for Kiddush Hashem Adodo. Shenemar v'nikdashti v'seich b'nei Yisrael. Then he brings another crazy passage. He says, if a person is Mekadesh, Shem Shamayim, he says, ba'alein, Nemar the Ramam says, and it says about them, ki olecho horegeni kol hayoyim, because you died for me the whole day. Says the Nesiva Sholem, I don't understand. A person's Moiser Nefesh for Kiddush Hashem, he dies on Kiddush Hashem, you only give your life once. We don't have nine lives, right? A person who's Moiser Nefesh gives his life once. What does it mean 
Ki olecho hargeni kol hayayim. Not a couple times. The whole day. Every day. We're mekadah shem shomayim. What does it mean? Says the Slana Merebbe. He says, Mitzvahs v'nikdashti v'sech b'nei Yisrael, the mitzvah of being mekadah shem shomayim, hu lorak bo'efen, sh'akum oinso lavo arveira. He says, it, it's not only when a guy comes up to you with a gun and says, bow down to this statue. Do this, I pray to Zara. It's a, a general job. It's an all-encompassing job. To fight and to struggle every single day, every moment of his life. To be Makadesh Shemayim, to make a Kiddush Hashem. The Lord of the Mitzvah Averis, he says, it's not only by a Mitzvah Avera, Elokol Chayam Shal Yehudi. Every bit of a life of a Jewish person is a milchoma, is a constant battle, Kineged Koyachara, against the power of evil. Kiddush Hashem, Nikdash Yibizach Bnei Yisrael, is not just kill me, it's to live up Kiddush Hashem. That's Kiddush Hashem. And we can be the Kaddish and Shemayim, we can do crazy things. But boys, I want to tell you a story. It blows my mind. You have no idea what you can do in the world. This is a true story. I read it years ago in the Jewish Observer. It was written by somebody by the name of Rabbi Roden. Rabbi Roden grew up in Washington, D.C. is where I was born. And I lived there till I was 12. And I know Rabbi Roden from Washington. And he wrote in a Maise Shehoyo. He became a Rav in Dallas, Texas. He writes that he's sitting in his office and he just bought a, when the shul started, they bought a house and they made it into a shul. He took a big mortgage. He didn't know what he's going to do. He's got mortgage payments. He didn't have money. He's trying to raise money. He doesn't know what to do. All of a sudden, he gets a phone call. He gets a phone call from a guy with a Texas draw. And the guy goes, hello, is this Rabbi Roden? He says, yes, this is Rabbi Roden. He goes, hi, my name is Lenny. Lenny, very nice. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm very, I'm very busy. Lenny says, well, Rabbi Roden, uh, I would like to make a donation to your synagogue. The rabbi goes, Lenny, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please, when can I meet you? Lenny goes, well, Rabbi, I would come over to your synagogue even right now. Rabbi Roden says, please, Lenny, I'm waiting for you. Lenny shows up at the shul. Lenny is a tall Texan with cowboy boots. He's got himself a cowboy hat. Doesn't look at all connected to Yiddishkeit. And he says, look, I would like to give you a donation, right? And Rabbi Roden takes him around the shul. He shows him everything that's going on. And Lenny tells him, here, he pulls out a check. He writes him a check for $2,000. Rabbi Roden is like blown away. This is great. This is going to get me through the mortgage for this month. He goes, Lenny, can I ask you a question? Why did you write me a check for $10,000? How'd you get here, right? Lenny tells him, Rabbi, I'll tell you. I went to visit Israel. And when I was in Israel, I went to the Wailing Wall, to the, the Holy Wall, right, in Jerusalem. And I was just standing there and watching. And I was just looking at the people. And I saw this Hasid up by the wall with the, you know, the ringlets by his ear, with a, with a round hat, and he was praying with such fervor. I never saw anything like it in my life. I was so impressed that I wanted to walk up to him and give him some money. But I knew that he would be embarrassed. I mean, he didn't know, the, you know, the, the Hasidim, the Shamers, they would have been happy to take the money, right? But he felt, I, I'm not going to go to give it to him because he'll be embarrassed. So I decided right there that I'm, when I get back to Texas, I'm going to go to the kosher bakery where I buy my kosher rye bread, and I'm going to ask the woman who owns the bakery, if there was a hasid like this in Dallas, Texas, where would he pray? So I went, and she told me, Rabbi Roden Synagogue. He said, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to fulfill my pledge. That's what he tells Rabbi Roden. Yeah. Rabbi Roden says that Lenny was a very sweet guy. He started inviting Lenny over to his house. They started learning together. Lenny became closer to Yiddishkeit. He would come for Shabbos. He connected with, with Rabbi Roden's kids. And it was beautiful. He said we had a beautiful, beautiful relationship. And we had all kinds of classes for Kiruv. 
and he was a he was a big sponsor in the yeshiva. He donated a lot of money to the to the shul, and we became very very close. And Rabbi Rodin says, and then one day, I get a phone call. It's Rabbi, it's Lenny's mom, and she tells me that Lenny passed away. I was Rabbi Rodin says he was heartbroken, and he decided we have to make a memorial service for Lenny in the shul. And when they when they planned it, he called the mother and invited her to the service, and. Rabbi Roden spoke about how close they were with Lenny and how close he was with the family and how connected he was and how much he had done for the shul. And the mother, after, after the, the service, she, go, she went up to Rabbi Roden, so she came up to me and she says, look, I didn't know, I knew my, my son was connected with you. I didn't know how connected he was to everything that's going on in the synagogue. She says, like, I'm very, very touched. And this lady became very, very involved in the synagogue and as much money as Lenny had, this lady had way, way more money than Lenny. And she started donating large amounts of money and they opened up shiurim, they opened up classes, they did outreach, they built a big shul. It was unbelievable the, the city of Dallas was changed. So much kiru, so many people became from. Unbelievable what was done. Rabbi Roden says, imagine, right? What happens, what happened? with this chassid. <clears throat> this chassid went to the kaisel. He comes home that night, and his wife asks him, No, Yanko, what did you do? Yanko goes, what did I do? I didn't do nothing. I went to the kaisel, and I said some tell him. Well, imagine after 120 years, when this chassid gets upstairs to Beis and Shomala, he stands before a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and the Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Whoa! Rabbi Yaakov, the Miyase, the founder of so much Tyra in Dallas, Texas, Shiurim and Valley Chubas, and families who became from. Ah, unbelievable, Rabbi Yaakov. Whoa, the year that Sadik of Dallas, Texas, you were Makarib, so many people of Dallas, Texas, so many Shiurim, so much Tyra. What is Yaakov going to do? Yaakov is going to look at the Kurdish Baruch and go, Dallas, Texas? What is Dallas, Texas? What the heck is Dallas, Texas? I don't even know. I've never heard of it. I don't know what it is. But his Tillam is going and pouring out his heart. He's living like a Yid. He's connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Some guy saw him. He doesn't even know he saw him. That's the Mikdash Yibesach B'nei Yisrael. That's the job that every single one of us has. To be Mekadosh Shem Shomayim. You have no idea who's watching you. You have no idea who's, who's looking at you. But every single day, the way we live, we can be the Kaddish and Shomayim. We can bring down cover to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. People can look at us and see, ah, this is, this is Taira. This is the children of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Give out. We have no idea what our Maisim do. We have no idea what the Kaychas that we have, the power from a Maisim, how we can be the Kaddish and Shomayim. I have a Chavrusa guy. His name is Rebar Yudaikin. He's a dentist. He tells me he lived in Rehovot. And he said he had, a, there was a guy there in the community who was a Baal Tshuva. So he sat with him once, he says, tell me something, how did you become a Baal Tshuva? The guy says, you know what, Aaron, I'll tell you, it's a very interesting story. I had a girlfriend, she wasn't from, and I wanted to marry her. We were really tight, we wanted to get married. And she got this crazy idea into her head that she, she started becoming religious. So she tells me, listen, I love you, but you're not from. I, I, you know, I, I want to have a from house, and, and I, you know, we can't get married like that. So she says to me, look, if you want to become from, you know, I love you. It would be great. But if you're not, if you're not going to be from, you know, it's just not going to work. So the guy says, you know what I decided? I decided, you know what? I'll take a look at what being from is. He says, but I, I, what do I know about being from? How do I know what it is? He said, I worked in a place called the Vulcan Institute. It's an agriculture, it's a world-renowned agricultural institute in Rehoboth. He says, I worked there. He says, I knew that there was one person there who was a from Yid. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch him for two weeks. And I'll see, is there any difference between a from Jew? Do they act any different? Do they, you know, are they more ben adam lechaveri? Are they more honest? Let me see what it is. I want to see in action what it is, right? He says, I watched this Jew for two weeks. And you know what? He was a very special person. I said, I saw, he was careful. The guy didn't take things that weren't his. The guy worked. The guy would, spoke nicely to everybody. I heard him on the phone with his wife. He said he was a different kind of a person. 
He says, after I watched the guy for two weeks, I called up my girlfriend. I said, you know what? I'm in. And he became from. And that's how he got married. And this guy today has children sitting and learning in yeshiva. Children, grandchildren. Why? Because of a person who was working and was mekade shem shemaim, just by the way he lived and by the way he acted. The guy doesn't even know. He doesn't even know that he made this guy from. Rabbi say every single one of us is mechuyev in the nigdash yibaseich in Israel to be to live, not just to die, O Kiddush Hashem, but to be mekade shem shemaim every day to everyone. And Rabbi say, I want to tell you one more thing. In this week's parsha, there's a beautiful, beautiful Ramosha. The Dorash Moshe says, a, ah, the velvet. The passage in the beginning of, of, of Parsha's Emor, it says, Emor Viomarto. It says, say twice, tell your children, Emor El Emor El Hakoyanim, Bene Aaron, Viomarto, Lem to say to Bene Israel. What is this double lotion? Say and to say. You have to say twice. Say once. The Moshe says, an unbelievable thing. The Moshe says, a father has a chiyuv to teach his children Torah, to teach them the mitzvahs, to tell them what they have to do. But he says, but there's another thing he has to do. He has to tell them something else. But to tell them something, not with words, to tell them something with the way he acts. He has to show them how beautiful Torah is. Rabbi says, the Jews who came over from Europe and they came to America, he says, do you know whose kids stayed from? Not the ones who said, oh, it's so hard to keep Shabbos, but a Kodesh Baruch Hu told me to keep Shabbos. Oh, I have to get up early and dab in. Oh, but I'm going to do it because a Kodesh Baruch Hu told me to do it. It's so schwer, schwer, it's so hard to be a Jew. And they did it. He says, that's, their kids didn't stay from. You know, the ones who stayed from, the father who said, came home and he said, Gevalt, Shabbos Kodesh. Ah, it's such a beautiful thing. I work all week and I come home and now I have Shabbos Gevaldik. I have this chus every morning to get up and to talk to a Kaddish Baruch to speak to him. I love it, it's Gevaldik. Ramayisha says, you can't just tell them what to do. You have to show them how beautiful Yiddishkeit is, how much we love it, how much meaning it has, how much it fits our life. He says, that you have to tell to your kids. But that, you don't say with words. That they see how you live. We have to be Mekadosh Shem Shomayim outside, but even more so, we have to be Mekadosh Shem Shomayim inside. To those who are close to us, to our children, to our chaverim, to our wife, how we treat our wives. Rabbi Sai, Kedashim to you! We should all be Kedashim. I love you. You guys are great. Player, thank you. Ah! Oh, yeah, that was fire. That was thank amazing, you. You. amazing. You guys are wonderful. I love it. Beautiful job. Thank you. Thank That yell made me almost fall off. Oh, his glasses are on. You could see now, guys. No, no, I see better. You know, I had I had cataracts for you. So I have to get you know, my, uh, what are they called? Multifocus. So I don't have them yet because it's not corona crazy. So when I read, I look close, I don't take them off. It'll be good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Take care, Rabbi Sam. Thank you. Just so everybody knows, there's a link for the Nivei WhatsApp group uh, in the chat, and there's also a link for uh, um, Rebbe Talmud question and request. And, uh,